it's a very well known thing. Developers don't actually look at documentation whenever they try to implement something. Well, documentation is useful both ways whether you're writing it or you're reading it. And as some statistics are showing, developers are reading more code than they're writing. So making our code easy to read, adding documentation to it can really help when it comes to working with the code base. I mean, when multiple people work on the same project, there will be challenges with different stuff. That's why we have different branching strategies, different ways to deploy, which minimize challenges and clashing of code. And documentation can help align the team on what solutions is acceptable, what is not, which direction is the code gonna go, and everything in between. And I think documenting your code well is a great skill if you want to progress in your career. Like I already mentioned, documentation is most useful when multiple people are working on the same project. In my experience, it's very rare to have a team that's fully aligned on all the ideas of how to implement everything. And the reason why we need good documentation is because it improves the maintainability of the code, meaning that if it's easy to come back to some old function that you wrote two years ago and you can find your way around it, fix a bug and continue with your other tasks, that means that the code is easily maintainable and documentation can help with that. The other thing that documentation can help with is team collaboration. Everyone writes their code in their own way and adding documentation or code comments or whatever it might be to help collaboration of the multiple people on the same project can be really helpful. And the third thing is onboarding. I mean, in the team, there might be a lot of churn and people can just come in and go, but onboarding new people can really be sped up if the code base has good documentation or it can be really slow if there's no documentation at all. And there's different types of documentation you can have for your code base. And depending on who the documentation is intended for, we can divide the type of documentation on these five different levels. We have low level or inline documentation. This is basically inline comments and the documentation very close to the code. Then we have internal documentation, which is intended for people working internally on the project. And this is not shared with anyone outside of the team or the company. Then we have external documentation. And this is intended for people using our product. This would be API documentation or things that are public that we want to guide the users how to use it. And we have walkthrough documentation and this, and this is basically walking through the code base and explaining where things live and how the whole thing is tied together. And then we have high level documentation, which is the high level architecture di diagrams, the database designs, and all of the decisions we've made that explains why the app is in the way that it is. And depending on the users or the product and the company working on the product, some of these levels might be redundant. You might not need an external documentation if your product is an internal product only. So I'm going to go through a few of these types of documentation, starting from low level and going upward. A lot of people might argue that you don't actually need to comment your code. And I mostly agree. Most inline comments explain what the code is doing, not why it's doing it. And that can really make a difference when it comes to inline comments. For example, I have here a card reducer that I've written and I have other comments here that basically explain what the code is doing, getting an existing item and then returning a new state with the updated quantity. And this all makes sense, but this covers the bad written code because if you improve the code, most of these comments are going to be redundant. For example, I've rewritten the add to card case. So now we can see the variable name tells us what we are getting. So this is the existing item. Then we have a new variable with the cart with updated item. So this will update the quantity of the item. And then if there is an existing item, we return the up cart with updated item, or we have a new item that we need to add to the cart. Then we have the cart with a new item in it, and then we return the new state. So this basically gets rid of all those comments. Let's look at this example as well. Here we have, instead of the comment, now we have a cart without item variable. And this makes sense, it shows what it is, and then we return the state with the card without the item. And this is basically just run on comment, I think. Don't really need to comment that. This is just an example of writing what the code is doing. I think if you're writing inline comments, it's always useful to think, can I make the code better and not actually need this comment, or do I really, really need this comment? In some situations, I think inline comments are useful is when you have business logic that drives the logic of the code. Sometimes, most of the times, business logic is not clear when you look at the code. You might see something like this where it says, 
if the user can manage ingredients then add a link to edit the ingredient and another one here that says if the user cannot manage ingredient then return unauthorized and this is a very easy example i haven't really written a code for my pulsar project that has a lot of business logic but if you have some complex business logic it might not be clear why why we have this logic in the app so adding a comment here i usually try to add a business rule here to explain what the comment is about and then we say only allow editing of ingredients that the user has permission to manage and then in here i'm basically the same comment only allow editing of ingredients that the user has permission to manage most often apps will have a lot of complex business logic and it can be unclear why some decisions have been made in the code so basically explaining the decision making with comments i think is great use for inline comments or a explaining business logic that is not clear from the code base. And sometimes there are some functions that are very convoluted by design. You can't really write it better. And I do like to add comments in there just to separate what it's doing. If I can't really think of a way to improve it just without the comment, then I will add comments. And another type of comments that I'm a big fan of is JS docs. I haven't really worked with JavaScript. This is the equivalent of PHP docs or Java docs or doc string in python but basically this would be the comments added that explains the function and how to use a function i'm gonna come back to an example in a bit but the reason I, why i love js docs or any type of doc because there are tools out there that you can use to compile all of those js docs into a page where people can visit and see what the functions are and the description of them and any parameters whatever basically info you put into the JS docs. And also code editors have IntelliSense, which can pick up this description or the parameter and the expected values for those. And whenever you use the function, it's gonna tell you what the parameters are, what the expected type is or what the expected value of it is. And it just gives more context for using something that you haven't really used before. Then this mostly will be for internal documentation but the JS doc page could be external if you have a package that's out there in the world and you want to allow the external users to see how they can use the function. I, the one I've used before is the Auth0 SDK documentation and this is, I think this is done with a tool. So basically this is picking up all the parameters, what it's returning, some description. And we can see here, this is a great example of good description it explains what the function is doing explaining some edge cases if it throws an error it's gonna show what error is throwing the parameters what it returns and yeah you can add a lot of information into the jazz docs i've seen some very big big jazz documentation but obviously that's up to you and whoever is reading your documentation to make sure that all the useful information is there nothing less and nothing more and using these tools will also make sure that the documentation is updated every time you update the JS docs. So every time you deploy, these are gonna get generated and you have the up-to-date documentation for your code, which is great. You don't have to write documentation separately from your code. High level documentation will be the architecture diagram, the design principle, data design, implementation guideline, or any broader concerns of the system. The aim here is to show how the system works on a high level, how it integrates with other systems, and any guidelines that will guide the development process. This is really useful when you want to add new parts to the system. Being able to see how the system integrates with other systems can also help you see potential risk or potential features that you can add to your app. And there's also different levels of high level documentation. For example, they can be a high level architecture diagram and a low level architecture diagram. And usually this is done at the start of the project. In a big company, people will get together and create a high level architecture diagram that shows the place of the system between all the other system, how it works with everything else. And then you go deeper and deeper into smaller components of it, basically architecting the whole solution. App documentation is my least favorite type of documentation. This is basically explaining all the features, user flows, and everything that's gonna be useful to the user of the app. This doesn't really explain the code base. This is documentation of the product. And it's very useful for the people trying to use the product. It's very useful to have documentation to understand how to use certain features and some gotchas or edge cases and stuff like that. But me as a developer, 
I don't really like writing this. And, and this type of documentation should be written in plain language and not use any technical jargon because people reading it might not be able to understand that. And also there's people that specialize in writing product documentation, basically copywriters that specialize in tech, but these people would go through the app, understand how it works, and then write documentation for all the features and user flows. And this would actually be put on your website or the, for all the users to see. And in big companies, there can be a support team that supports multiple products. And this documentation is crucial for them to understand how the app works and help solve the user's issues. And there's other ways you can document your code base or the application. There's countless tools out there that you can use. For example, the Swagger documentation for APIs, MKDocs, Markdown files for each directory, documentation in Confluence, and I'm sure there's other ones that I haven't actually used. But the biggest issue I have with documentation, apart from not actually wanting to write it, is if the documentation lives in a separate place, it's very easy to forget about it. And that's why I think documentation should live as close to the code as possible. Now, of course, depending on the type of documentation, this might not be possible, but if the documentation is actually in the code, this way it can be added to the merge request and be reviewed together with the actual feature. Unit tests or integration tests is also very useful to provide some types of documentation. I have been known to go through unit tests before, especially for using other third-party SDKs to understand what the intended input should be and what the intended output should be. The odd zero SDK that I showed, some of the functions not very well documented. So I have been going through their unit tests to understand, but yeah, this can also serve as documentation of some kind. Another good way to internally document your code is including as much information into a merge request as possible. You can really go wild with merge request descriptions and you can add all types of stuff in there. You can add pictures, you can add animations and whatever. And documenting the feature and everything you need for the people reviewing the code is a great way to have some type of documentation for the code base. And this can also serve as a historic view of what was implemented and the future at that time. Okay, now let's go to some of my files of the ad that I'm working on and document some of the files just to understand what I'm thinking about when I'm writing documentation. Like here, I have some actions that I actually want to document with JS Docs. I will use AI, I use Super Maven at the moment to help me just write some of the stuff. So I have a parameter here with the data. This will be the, the function is create ingredient in the database. So the data will be the ingredient data to be inserted does return the new ingredient and then in the description this is a simple function doesn't have any logic at all so creates a new ingredient in the database that's basically it and now when i use this function i can see that documentation here which is very useful especially for functions that other people write it's very useful to understand how that function works and what the expected parameters are and what it returns. Cool, let's go through the other ones. Now here I have some logic that I'm gonna explain in the documentation. Basically, if there's no session, it's gonna return an empty array. There we go. There's no parameters, it just returns ingredients. Perfect. For some functions, I'm also gonna add examples in here. Usually when I have functions that mutate the input and for example if I have a function that product, reducts the email because I want to log it somewhere and I don't want to log PII then I'm gonna add some examples to understand how it reducts email because there's multiple ways you can do this and I can't really explain that with the function name I have to actually look at some examples and I think that's where example is the most useful there's there's a lot of different things you can add to the JS docs here you can see a lot of the stuff in here but we can add an example but this is a very easy example that doesn't really make sense but this is how it would look when people are using the function just going this for now let's add one more perfect so I, I usually try to explain some of the logic in here especially if it's very convoluted and business logic maybe i would explain it in the description but i try not to add too much of fluff in here because 
basically just needs to give enough context for people using the function, but not too much. And this is an example of, this is the result that I'm using here, and these are their, their JS docs. And you can see how they describe it. They point to other stuff. You can also add a link to the docs here. You have an example, which is very useful. Multiple types of examples as well. So yeah, that's perfect example of good JS doc documentation. And there's also some famous a API documentation out there. The one I found very useful is Stripe documentation. So these are basically documentation of how to use the Stripe API. You can see here an example and you can see the response object. It also explains all the parameters. This one doesn't have parameters, but let's try. List all balance transactions. You have parameters here and it explains what the parameter is for. Add all the parameters and, and it explains what the acceptable values for the types are, some optional parameters, and it explains what it returns. And you have an example here that you can use to make sure that you are using the response object correctly. I usually go to these when I'm using a third party API and I want to understand what the response object is and what the parameter can be to make sure that I can use whatever I intend to use from the response object. For example, if I want to use the currency, I'm going to come in here and make sure that that's included in the response. There's also a lot of different examples out there for good and bad documentation, but I hope you understand why we need documentation, how to write good documentation and what's actually important when writing documentation or for your code base. If you remember one thing from this video, I hope is that the code comments should explain why the code is written in a way that it is instead of what the code is doing. Cool, that's been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, put it down in the comments below. I go through all the comments on my videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. I think like 94% or something of the people are not subscribed. And thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding. Bye.